and the clock is ticking. All right. Just adjust my chair. Okay. I think that's everything. Just gonna click some more things, and I think we're all set. Cool. Yeah, I'm in the shot there. I got Nick in there. The lighting looks good. I'd like to welcome everybody to the show today on the 26th of August. Hope everybody's doing well. It's uh, so far so good today. Uh, I guess it's going to get a little warmer, but right now it's kind of nice, a little humid. Um, you're going to hear these weird buzzing noises coming from outside from time to time. They are called cicadas, and they are some sort of giant bugs who sit in trees and make a lot of noise. And I think that's all they do. I mean, I assume they eat and procreate, and I don't know. But their bug job, as far as I can tell, is just to make this sort of omnipresent sort of kind of weird buzz outside that kind of rises and falls in cadence from time to time. I don't know if they do it at night. I'll have to pay attention tonight and see if they do it at night. You'll probably also hear some crickets. These are the benefits of uh, having the windows open, I guess. All right, let me see. What have we got here going on? We've got Japan. We've got Michigan, Portugal, Wales. Uh, Randall says good morning to Nick. That's very nice. Uh, we've got the Netherlands, Denver, Germany, Central Oklahoma, Jakarta, uh, Northeast England, South Jersey. Congrats on over 100,000 followers. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, Newcastle. Uh, hello from Mordor. Weather's not great. Well, yeah, that's what I hear about that. Um, Northern Ireland. Pontiac, Illinois. Cancun. Oh, wow. Alberta, Holland, Austria, um, Atlanta, Round Lake Beach, Illinois, Bremen. Rodney says he can just hear crickets. Oh, yeah. Uh, Clearwater, Florida, Yorkshire, England. Um, my chat room is always covered up, but there we go. The company that I use for my... Um, uh, whatever this is, the switch. It's called XSplit. It's a piece of software that allows me to to do things like switch between this and this and that and junk like that. Anyway, um, they recently had an update last week, and um, now I can't shrink the window as small as I used to because I used to just keep it over in the corner so I could see that at least I was in the shot. And um, now it takes up not half of my screen, but it takes up a good portion of my screen, and so now I have to sort of scooch everything else. Um, anyway. Uh, Duluth, Georgia, upstate New York, um, Japan, London, New York City, Greece, Wales, uh, Spokane, Stonehenge. Wow, really? Um, more England, Dallas, Leeds, Iceland. I am not going to be able to pronounce neither your name, uh, a good person, or the city that you live in. I'm just, I got Iceland. That's the, that's the best I can get out of all of that. Uh, I apologize. Um, Virginia Beach, Indianapolis. Good morning from Edmonton. Played my first game of Age of Sigmar, organized through Game 4. It was a good stepping point into the community. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Um, I'm glad to hear that... I mean, I keep hearing stories from people who are telling me that, you know, that they've they've used Game 4 to find people in a local area to play games with, and that's been really cool. I've also been um, seeing it pop up more and more on Reddit. Um, I've been... I've got a... This is a piece of software. It's an app for your phone called If This Then That. And it allows you to set conditional situations um, so that you can say, you know, like if... And, and it's, it allows you to link up with all kinds of different apps and services and things like that. So one of the things you can do is it can search Reddit. And any time that the word Game 4 gets used in a subreddit, it will shoot me an email and say, hey, someone used the word Game 4. And then I can go and check it out and make sure that... You know, if there's any questions that need to be answered, that kind of stuff. I've also got it set up to search my local um, Craigslist for specific camera gear that I'm looking for that maybe someone's going to sell and all kinds of neat little stuff like that. I've got it hooked up to our uh, 
our thermostat for our furnace. So if uh, the temperature in the house ever gets below 59 degrees, <clears throat> I get a text and an email. Just so I'm assuming at that point, maybe the furnace has died. So little things like that. If this, then that is kind of a neat little system if you're into having things alert you when certain things happen. And it's it's been around for a long time. It keeps growing and growing, all the different apps and, and other services that it can tie into. But anyway, that's why I do, whenever someone mentions that uh, Game 4 on Reddit, I A, find out about it, and B, I do have a tendency to usually kind of chirp a little bit and say and answer a question if I can. What else have we got? Kalamazoo. That's a fun word to say. Rochester. Um, Canada, Virginia. First Sunday morning off in a while. Finally get to hang out. Well, glad to hear it. Let me see here. Phoenix, playing my first 40K RTT today at Desert Sky Games. Wish me luck. Well, good luck. Patrick says, listening while I fold clothes. Not as fun as hobbying. You know, I, I, I get that. Hey, Uncle Adam, is there a danger of hobby overload as Games Workshop releases too much too quickly? Um, that's a good question because people have been bringing it up lately. I, my, my easy answer is I'm not overloaded because I just don't buy it all. You know what I mean? Like there are some people that are like, man, I just don't know how I'm going to be able to handle all this. And I always just say, well, just only buy the things you like. I mean, if you like all of it, well, then you have to kind of pick and choose and look at your, your budget and stuff like that. Um... I think the only real problem with potential kind of like what they call, you know, um, oh, there's a word for it. It's when you it's when your product line cannibalizes itself. That can sometimes be trouble. Uh, a couple of years back, the folks at Fantasy Flight Games, um, X-Wing was doing great. And then they released, basically they released uh, Imperial Assault and Armada, both also Star Trek or Star Star Trek Star Wars games. They released those two games almost on top of each other, along with another big wave release for um, for X Wing. Now, from what I understand, this was not intentional. It was that basically what happened was people uh, like there was a, a, a big um, strike at the at the port on the west coast. So the stuff that was supposed to come in and kind of get like kind of you know dropped out slowly you know like oh well then this is going to come out and in a couple more months this is going to come out it all had been stuck in the port uh during the strike for quite some time so when the strike finally ended everything kind of came out and they'd been sitting on it for a while and of course it had messed up all their projections and all that jump so they dumped everything out all at once so there were star wars f fans out there who had been playing x-wing who were like well now all this stuff came out at once and now i don't know what to buy and i'm not sure and i think that sometimes when you dump it all like right on top of each other that can be troublesome, um, especially because at the time they were also having a lot of production problems. If you remember back in the earlier parts of the X-Wing days, there were times when you're like, I would love to buy uh, a Millennium Falcon, but they're not anywhere in any stores and you can't find them. So um, that's a bummer. But um, yeah, that's right now I think that we're seeing what? There's a cat shenanigans going on. Oh, is that why we're, we're singing? Uh, anyway, so yeah, that kind of thing is um, kind of a problem as far as, uh, you know, you have to watch about dumping stuff too quickly. I think because they're alternating between different subject matters and different lines, um, and I think because they're, even like in 40K, it's so broad, they can kind of spread things around a bit. So the oversaturation thing, I think, is less of an issue to, that, to some degree. Um, I mean, it, you know, it's... If you think back even like four or five years ago or even less, you know, where it was like we were lucky to get three codices in a year, you know, and that was about it. Um, it's I don't think it's a bad problem to have, but I can see some people being a little bummed about it. So anyway, what else have we got here? Priming minis from the game of Vengeance. Discovered that they are a tad bit bigger than the minis I used for last day's zombie apocalypse. Not pleased, but I'll have to make them work. Give me that. <laughs> uh, one of the one of the the cats. She has this little piece of foam that was window insulation that you stuff in there, and 
Its name is Foamy, and um, she likes to uh, walk around with it in her mouth and, and meow and, and play with it and stuff, and she's doing it. Well, she was doing it right here, but now she's stopped, thankfully. Anyway, um, E1 Miniatures says, Hello from dreary Scotland, working on an arch warlock I converted from a tech priest dominus. Glad I managed to catch the stream today. Well, we're glad to have you here. Um, I was mostly, let's see, what was I doing yesterday hobby-wise? Mostly I was just working on Tau. Uh, which was me uh, building uh, Pathfinders and getting that taken care of so that I can uh, get all that ready to go for my kill team. Um, and it is going to be, eh, I want to say, seven Pathfinders. One, two, three, four, no, maybe, maybe six. Six Pathfinders, the big weird recon drone that comes in that box, and then two of the um, stealth suits. That's currently my list. So, um, But yeah, I got I got Pathfinders built yesterday, and um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get the stealth suits finished before I leave for Nova open. So we'll see how that goes. Thomas says, I'm new to Age of Sigmar and had a hard time deciding on a faction, but your tips and expertise about soup and going for what's fun to build and paint really helped out a lot. Thanks. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I, I think that that's one of the big benefits, and it was a smart thing that Games Workshop did, where they were like, you know what, we'll make it so that we can, so that, because there are a lot of players out there who are, who are like, I would love to try out a little bit of this, but I don't want to build a whole army. And it was kind of, I think there's something to be said about like, well, I could just sit down and paint some Beastmen just for the fun of painting Beastmen. But when you're playing a bunch, you're kind of like, I, I should be spending my time trying to get things done that are actually going to help me play more as opposed to things that maybe just are here for me to paint. There are certainly plenty of people who are absolutely happy to just take some time and paint some stuff that they wanted to paint. Um, but, you know, there's also a lot of people who are like, uh, but if it's not something that I'm, that's going into my army, I don't know if I want to do it. And that's kind of that tipping point for a lot of people. So it was very smart of uh, GW, even back in, I think, probably 6th edition, when they started adding allies in. I mean, it was that ally matrix was a little weird. Um, and now that they've gotten to 8th edition, it's obviously a lot more relaxed. But um, the fact that you can just kind of build a little bit of this and add it to your army is fine. And now with Kill Team, of course, you can just build a small little force that you probably wouldn't otherwise ever build. You know, like I've got my um, Tyranids built and primed. Uh, I've never done Tyranids before, so uh, yeah, so it'll be it'll be fun to see, um, definitely. Adam, what are some of your favorite converted armies or single models you've seen, or at least notable ones? Um, gosh, converted, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, I, I would say probably, I have seen people do cool things with, uh, like other, like, they'll take like Skaven stuff and modify it quite a bit. Um, obviously like orc stuff, orc vehicles are, I've seen some pretty interesting things with orc vehicles where, you know, the looted vehicles where you've taken a rhino or a land raider or, or whatever and modified it. Um, uh, vendetta, I still remember seeing a cool orc vendetta. Probably one of the coolest that I can think of now as far as an overall co cohesive army was a, a guy, a local guy around here whose name was Scott who had a an amazing trader guard, an entire trader guard army that was just astounding. Like he had vendettas that were completely covered in like dragon scales and eyes all over the place. And he had converted them to have like, um, you know, like ducted fan instead of just like normal, like airplane wings and stuff. And they were just astounding. Um, I wonder if I can find them on the YouTube or, uh, Let's see if we can find them online someplace. Um, Traitor Imperial Guard Vendetta. Because um, I'll recognize it when I see it. He took it to Adepticon a bunch of times, and uh, it was just... He he did all of the sculpting and everything himself, and it was amazing. Um, sadly, I am not currently seeing it it was just like every last piece of the entire army was just amazing but i'm not seeing it so um i if i bump into him again uh soon hopefully i can uh chat with him and say hey i'd love to see some more pictures um but yeah uh, i lost the chat window all right <clears throat> 
Let's see here. J.E. Granberg asks, do you think that 40k kill team is good for tabletop novice players? I'm thinking about gifting a set to my 14-year-old nephews. Um, 14 years old. I think if they've been playing other tabletop games, and if you think that they have the patience to build, or if you want to sit down with them and, and kind of you know build the, the two forces and the terrain that come in that box, then I think that, yeah, you could definitely um, get them very interested potentially in that kind of stuff. If they're just straight up video game only and not really interested in, you know, that kind of stuff, or they're really into sports and they don't like to be in the house at all during the summer or whatever, you know, it may be a little bit more difficult. But if they're, you know, if they're kind of indoor kids and they've got an interest in building and, and doing stuff with their hands and things like that and whatever, and you can kind of give them some help, I think that that's probably not a bad idea at all. Um, I was going to try to think if there's something else. I mean, even if you went into, like, the new... Um, they've got that new game that's based off of Blood Bowl called Blitzball, I think, that I don't think you can get in, like, game stores. I think you can only get it, like, at Barnes & Noble and places like that. Um, that also might be a good... Especially if they're into sports, too, if they're into football at all. I mean, that might be a good starting spot, too, for, for younger kids. Um, definitely, yeah. DJ Morph is wondering if we can skip September and just go straight to Orktober. Um, I don't think that legally we can, but it's um, as you get older, you'll find that um, you'll get to the next month a lot quicker than you would have thought. Uh, it's it's yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, it'll be here sooner than I think, at least as far as that's concerned. So yeah. Uh, Joshua says, any comments on the new Beastman stuff? I, like, literally, just before hopping in the shower earlier, when I was putting up the notice and everything like that for that, a friend of mine posted, like, a picture from, like, I think a white dwarf saying, like, he had just finished his Beastman army, you know, and all this stuff, and now all of a sudden they've released all this new stuff. So I haven't actually really even had a good chance to look at it yet. Um, let's go to here. So this is the stuff about the grand opening at that thing in Texas yesterday, I guess. The new Warhammer Citadel in, in Texas. I'm looking to see if they've got... No, I don't see anything in there. So let's go back. I don't know if they've even posted about the new... Oh, wait, here we go. That looks like a Beast Man. Chaos Battle Tome, Beasts of Chaos. Let's see some cool close-up. Ooh, that's a fun one. That's I like the look of that... Uh, that's a cool, like, uh, totem, I guess. Really nice paint. Yeah, I like that glow that they've done down there. That's very nice. Like, if they've decided to come up with a whole new set of Beastmen, like, these kind of look like the old Beastmen. They don't look that new, but... Uh-oh, no, I can't make it go back. Um, hmm. Oh, oh, wait. It's because it opened a new window. Aha. All right, so there's some new spell effects, and that's... Let's see, Beasts of Chaos will be in stores in September. Um, so there's a Battle Tome. I don't see... Uh, the Herdstone is getting an update, blah, blah, blah. B -d 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 -d. Doesn't really say... Well, here we go. So, okay, so there are going to be some new models, it looks like. I mean, these guys still kind of look like the regular ones, but they could be resculpts. A lot of this big stuff in the back, that's definitely new. That big dude is pretty awesome. Uh, he's got like four arms I think that's weird um, those guys I think are the regular they're old those are the dragon or dra whatever the hell those guys are called um, so yeah some of these are new and some of them are not but that's pretty cool I'm glad that they're finally I'm I've always liked the goat people you know me so um, I, that's kind of cool I'm looking forward to that but this is honestly the first I've looked at it um, it's interesting that they're going this direction I'm glad to see it you know, as most people will say, well, at least it's not more, you know, um, Stormcast. And that's true. Um, yeah, I've always thought the Beastmen, I've always loved the the Beastmen because I thought that their, like, their personalities, like the faces and the sculpts and everything like that are so good. And so hopefully they give them some slightly better abilities and some much cooler looking, bigger dudes. I'm all for that. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be good, I think, for that army. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, that just got posted uh, today, as a matter of fact. So, yeah, interesting. So that's a pretty new thing. 
And um, I'm not a news program, but now you've heard about it here. So there you go. Um, let me see here. I'm going to go back to that. And going to try to close. I need more. That's what I need. More windows open. That's what I need. Um, all right. There we go. So yeah, new new Beastman. That's very cool. Um, uh, looks like Randall was at the Big Citadel thing yesterday. Very crowded, but a lot of fun. The staff was great. Glad to hear that. Um, uh, Judger Notified. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. Why does Why does October and Red Dead Redemption Two have to be in the same month? Well, that's the way that works. Um, what else have we got here? Jay Weir says, thank you so much for painting with the pro vids and your wet palette vid. My frustration has subsided greatly. Always glad to help there. Absolutely. Um, Drop Podcast says, hey, Adam, congrats on 100,000 uh, subscribers. I was going to go to Nova this year, but not sure if I'm going to make it this year. I was going to go to Nova, but not sure I'm going to make it this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be there. I'm leaving Wednesday, so I'll get there sometime Wednesday afternoon. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's. I'm looking forward to it. I've never been... I've really ever, ever really been out that way at all. And I've never been to Nova before, so that'll be very interesting as well. I'll talk a little bit more about it later. <clears throat> um, VJ Morph says, the disappointing thing about the new Beastman thing is that that means that that bull spell, that cool, um, you know, permanent bull spell, is for Beastman. He was quietly hoping for Chaos Dwarves. I can see that. That makes sense. Um... Mr. Tim the Badger says, Hi, Uncle Adam. So, GW are releasing a new version of the Hobbit strategy battle game next weekend. Does that float your boat at all? Um, I own the original Lord of the Rings strategy battle game book. Like the hardcover when it first came out. And it's cool. It, it The thing that was very interesting to me at the time when I picked it up back, you know, in the 2000s, was that it was very different from every other game that Games Workshop was making. As a skirmish game, it seemed really cool. Like, I was reading the rules and going, wow, this is... I would really enjoy playing this. I wish that they would make this, like, for 40K or for Fantasy or whatever, but it was only for um, the Lord of the Rings stuff. The problem is, partially, and I'm, I'm interested, but the problem is, is that, like, most of the Lord of the Rings stuff now is predominantly Forge World. And I kind of don't want to go down that path. I mean, there was always, there always has been a little bit here and there of like actual plastic kits and things like that for the Lord of the Rings stuff. Like I've still got a box of Urukai somewhere in the basement that I bought because I was going to use them for something else cool. Um, and I probably still will. I'm going to probably use them actually for Song of Blades and Heroes, like playing at conventions and stuff like that. Mix them in with my skeletons. You know, like the skeletons and the, and the, the orcs have decided to work together somehow. And... Um, and then you have to fight a whole bunch of them. Because the thing is, is that right now, the issue that I'm having when I run that game, and it's fun, and the, the players enjoy it, but the skeletons, even though there's so many of them, when the players first look at the, at the field, and they're like, wow, there are so many skeletons, the way that undead rules work is that when you lose a, um, like a morale check, you don't start to run towards the edge and then potentially run back after you get better at morale. You just turn to dust. And when you pop like that as an undead, it then causes all of the other ones around you to have to take a morale test. The other, you know, zombies, let's say, or, or in this case, skeletons. And so there are, like, a ton of skeletons on the board. And then in a couple of turns, it's just like, they, they just start to pop like popcorn. And then, they're, you know, so I would like to have some orcs in there, too, that would not run away as easily. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, you got off track there. What I'm talking about, though, is the... Uh, skirmish, the the strategy battle game, the skirmish game, basically, for Lord of the Rings. And like I said, I don't know, I haven't looked at the new rules, but the old rules I really enjoyed. I thought they were really well done. So anyway, yeah. <clears throat> what else have we got here? Adam, have you spoken about the regional pricing thing in Forge World? Uh, I don't really know much about it, so no, I haven't. DJ Todd P. Harris says, what are your thoughts on the upcoming Rogue Trader release? Um... I think it's cool that they're making it a an, an expansion for Kill Team. Um, I'm not... I don't know if I'm interested necessarily. I gotta be honest with you. Like, the models that I've seen, they're very different than what I'm used to, and I'm not 
necessarily on board. Like they're okay, but they're not, I don't know, they're just not quite my thing. And um, it looks like the board, because you're playing, it looks like you're playing more on a ship. Like the battle is happening on a rogue trader on the ship. So therefore there's not as much terrain. Like it's more bulkheads and stuff like that and not the kind of more three-dimensional stuff that was in the, the, the big kill team box last month. So yeah, I don't know. I, it's just not my thing, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So I, I don't know, I'll have to take a look at it. It'd be interesting to see because there's going to be a big press event at Nova. So it'll be interesting to see if they have more information about it. I know it's supposed to be coming out in September. Originally they were saying it was going to be late 2018 and they've decided to bump to, you know, move it up evidently if it's coming out in September. So we'll see how that works out. JP Got Rockets says, good morning from the pocket dimension. How are you doing? Um, what else here? Uh, VJ Morph says, Lord of the Rings IP was killed by the fluffing in the Hobbit flicks, in my opinion. Yeah, my wife and I are of the same opinion on that. We we saw the first Hobbit movie. Uh, I mean, she's a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings stuff. We saw the first Hobbit movie, and um, we didn't see any of the other ones. Uh, it's I mean, and we love the the Lord of the Rings movies. They're great, but man, that yeah, that was not a that was not a necessity. Um, so yeah, definitely. Hey, Uncle Ed, I'm not sure if you already covered this, but what are your thoughts on Forge World's new price increase? I, in favor of shipping. I don't really, I haven't really paid attention to it because I don't buy anything on Forge World. Um, like, I think I bought, uh, did I buy it? Well, I bought something once a couple years back that was delivered to Adepticon, so you got free shipping. What the heck was it? Like shoulder pads or, or uh, some sort of Nurgle stuff. Nurgle, oh, it was the upper torsos for Death Guard Terminators. Like, I think that's potentially the only Forge World I've ever bought. So I don't really know what's, uh, what much, what, uh, you know, I don't know a lot about it. I haven't been paying attention, frankly, so. Um, what else? Uh, Moderator Matt says that I like the price increase. I, I don't know if that's the truth, <laughs> but, uh, you know. Uh, Nef Nefanil? Let's say that's I'm pronouncing that right. Is that a cello in the back? Yes, that is uh, that is my wife's cello case. These uh, googly eyes uh, were were sent to me by uh, VJ Morph, and uh, now the cello case. Uh, his name is uh, Nick Romando. JP Got Rockets says congratulations on the 100,000. Um, it's a good cel uh, maker's mark is a good celebratory libation. Crack the wax on this momentum occasion. Uh, probably not it. 9:28 in the morning on a Sunday, but I do I do agree. Uh, I've had some some of, some of that a little bit in the in the uh, yes since since Wednesday. Um, let me see here. Dave says hello. First time catching your live show. Do you think that October will give the Green Tide a primary type orc? Considering almost every other faction for 40k has one. Oh, that's a good question. Um, one thing they could do is they could make that giant. Um, Oh, they should just make the foot of Gork or Mork just as a big giant plastic model. That would be hysterical. <laughs> like just comes down and just like stomps on people like at the, like the um, what do you call it? The uh, uh, Monty Python. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, but otherwise, I know that there was a Forge World piece for it was a huge like orc, uh, like a stone golem thing. Um, if you go back to years ago, I interviewed... I think in 2014, I interviewed uh, Tom Ailes, who was the last American Slayer Sword winner. He won the Slayer Sword in America in 2013. And his big winning piece was this huge Forge World orcish stone doohickey. I forget the actual name for it. Um, stone Idol, something, some sort of idol. They could make a cool plastic one of those. That could be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else they would have. A giant foot of Gork and or Mork would be pretty cool. Though. I, I, would, I, would, I would definitely like to see some modifications on that. Adam, do you have any idea why Games Workshop did not pay attention to the Latin America market? It is a great market that even video games have taken into account. I'm not sure. Um, I have been told by several people, and this is more South American, uh, but I've been told by people like in Peru that you can basically, it's almost impossible to get any kind of Games Workshop stuff, and it has to do more with the distributors. Now, Games Workshop certainly likes to go around distributors when they can, so they'll work directly with game stores. Most of your game stores that are independent game stores, not Games Workshop stores, if they're, if they're carrying Games Workshop stuff, they probably have a direct 
deal with Games Workshop, whereas most things that a game store buys and then sells to you comes through a distributor, which is basically kind of like a middleman. So they don't have to go to every manufacturer and say, oh, I'd like to buy three of these. I'd like to buy four of these from this manufacturer and all that kind of stuff. They can go to one place and get all their stuff. But um, Games Workshop is willing to do their own direct sales to the stores. So um, I'm not sure what's going on with that. I mean, I get the feeling they're probably going to be expanding, like they've expanded into Asia over the last five to ten years, which they kind of didn't really before that. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Rogue Idol, says the Orc Warlord. Well, yes, the Orc Warlord would know, I would assume. Um, definitely, yeah, the Rogue Idol uh, was the big, the big uh, piece. Uh, Paul Noxie says, I recently found out that Death's Door Gin is made in Wisconsin. One of my favorite gins. Well, we know our booze here. Um, hey, Adam, now that all of the specialist games are out, do you think the Battlefield Gothic is coming soonish? Well, I wouldn't say that all the battle, or all the specialist games are out because there's still Mordheim, which a lot of people are clamoring for. Um, yeah, I don't know if Battlefield Gothic... I don't know. I mean, you don't see a lot of spaceship tabletop war games these days. You know what I mean? Like, I used to play a game called Silent Death. Oh, gosh. The 90s. Into the early 2000s, we used to play Silent Death all the time, which was made by Iron Crown Enterprises. And that was a great spaceship game. And you just don't see a lot of spaceship games anymore. I mean, you had, like, Firestorm Armada, but that kind of... Mm, um, I mean, you see stuff like Drop Zone Commander, Drop Fleet Commander, but, you know, again, that's not as popular, so I don't know that they're going to necessarily go down that road. They may, but I get the feeling that they might go towards Mordheim first. Um, they might potentially try to work the Mordheim angle into more of a, maybe of an Age of Sigmar thing. I don't know. We'll have to see, because then that way you could use your Age of Sigmar models, or potentially use some Age of Sigmar models. I could honestly see them making a Mordheim that was very much like Kill Team, where, I mean, Mordheim was like what Kill Team is now, because Mordheim was its own rule set. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, Brian Griffith says they could just provide you with a can of green body paint to dip your foot in. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess you could do that, too. It's not as much fun to model, I suppose. <clears throat> Uh, VJ Morph, by the way, if anyone's looking for a really fun, quick game to play based in the 40k IP, check out the Gretchen's card game. It is awesome. I saw it at Gen Con, but I did not pick it up. Um, I'll have to take a look and see. I don't think that my local shop has it, but I'll have to tell him that he should do that. Uh, let me see here. What else have we got? Leslie Schaefer says yes to Mordheim. Uh, yeah, no. I, Toby Walker says um, X-Wing is a spaceship game. Yes, no, that is that is very that is a very good point. It's more fighters though, I guess. But yeah, no, you've got a good point. The X-Wing is a big is a big spaceship game. Like I feel like because it's Star Wars, it's kind of almost removed. You know, like trying to get people to play a relatively newish or unknown spaceship game might be difficult, but when you tell people, hey, it's Star Wars, they'd be like, all right, I'm on board. And I'm like, but I didn't tell you anything else about it yet. And then there's a lot of people who'd be like, but you said it was Star Wars, so I'm there. You know, so it could be that. Um, but yeah, that's a very good point. X-Wing is a Star Wars game, uh, or is a spaceship game. Audrey Keith says, hasn't Frostgrave kind of filled up the Mordheim space in the market? Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, that's really what kind of Frostgrave, that's the niche that they kind of went after. So now the question is, does GW want to come back in and, and go up against Osprey? And I mean, you know, GW, I don't think... Osprey's been killing it the last, like, three, four years. They've, they've been making so much great stuff. Um, I mean, you know, Gas, or, yeah, Gaslands is doing spectacular for them. Frostgrave is doing spectacular for them. They're coming out with a lot of new products from a lot of new companies like... You know, Ash Barker from Guerrilla Miniature Games, uh, you know, on, on YouTube. He's got the Last Days game. Um, they've been working with Warlord on stuff for Conflict 47 and Bolt Action. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing great. Um, but I don't think that Games Workshop would even flinch if they thought, well, you know, let's just make Mordheim. Because they there's so many people that remember that. It's got so much built into it that people would just be like, you know, I'm not saying people would stop playing Frostgrave. I think that. There'd be very few people that'd be like, well, I could get into Mordheim, but I've been playing Frostgrave. Like, if somebody would liked Mordheim and they came out with it again, they would jump into that. People are happy to be able to do that. Um, 
so yeah, I, I I don't know, but I just don't know if that's down the road more for them. I mean, you're right; they've they've produced now. I mean, Kill Team was kind of specialist. Um, Blood Bowl now, you know, that's been out for a while. Um, now, basically, Epic, aka Adeptus uh, Titanicus. Um, I saw that at the local store. Uh, well, I, I saw the box. I it's I thought it would be bigger. I thought it was gonna be a bigger box. Um, but yeah. So anyway, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, do you think the GW will? Oh, hang on. Do you think the GW will deep dig deep enough into the vaults and bring Dark Future back? I think the Mad Max aesthetic would work well, perhaps in conjunction with Necromunda Gangs. Um, if anything, I think that Speed Freaks might kind of fill that role a little bit. If they make that to be basically kind of a little bit of a Gorka Morka thing, I think I could see that. So yeah, um, I don't know about I don't know about well they're making a video game of Dark Future. I know that that's not out yet, but I've seen alpha stuff about it like on YouTube. So yeah, um, let's see here. Question: I never hear you mention the GW texture paints much. The Mars dried riverbed, the snow and the mud work great for basing. I use the snow and mud with your basing soda trick. I don't know if that's a question. Um, the texture paints. I use I only use two of the texture paints ever from GW. I will use the crackle paints, and it doesn't matter what color because I'm going to prime over it anyway. So I will, on the base, I will actually paint the base with some sort of brush-on primer because I've tried in the past. If you add the crackle paint stuff directly to the plastic of the base, it will not stick with the crap. It will flake off and disappear on you. So what happens is that I will I will paint it with like a like a like a Reaper black brush on primer. And then I will paint and slop on the crackle paint real thick so that it cracks nice. And then I will prime over it and then I'll paint over it. But I don't ever use it the way they kind of want you to, which is to kind of put it on at the last minute and then let it crackle up and keep the color it's supposed to keep. I just don't like the look of it. I don't know why. Um, the, the, the texture paint from GW that I will like leave as is, is the dirt kind of slash mud stuff but I only use it like on tank treads or on vehicles. If I want it to look real dirty on the bottom, like the undercarriage or whatever, or like, you know, like a rhino's treads or something like that, like last step, I will, before before varnishing, is I will slop that stuff on there to make it like a, a, a chunky mud texture stuck to the treads. And then after I do a varnish, I will then frequently go back with a gloss, like on a brush, a gloss coat, and put it on that chunky mud to make the mud look wet. But that's about it. Otherwise, I don't really use the texture paints for basing much at all. Um, and the only time I ever use the crackle stuff is if I really want something to look like dried riverbed kind of look. But I don't ever use it the way that they want you to. I always use it and then prime over the top of it. Um, are you privy to any Malifaux 3rd edition news? I am not. I am privy to the fact that 3rd edition is coming, but I don't know anything about it. Um, hey, Uncle Adam, have you seen the post-apocalyptic game Waste Man? Crazy mutants, big robots, UFOs, huge feet that descend from the sky. Seems like a fun game. I've heard of it, and I've seen pictures about it, like, online. Uh, I don't know anything about the game other than it's, yeah, it's a kind of a post-apocalyptic game. The miniatures, to me, look... I, I don't want to sound like a jerk. They look retro. And I don't know if they're trying to be retro or not, um, but they've got this very kind of fun sort of like, it reminds me very much of like images that I've seen from the 80s, which I think has got some sort of endearing quality to it. But I've never, I don't know, I don't know anybody who's ever played it. I've only, like I said, heard about it online. Um, I can picture the logo in my head, so that's good. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, Mac the Maker's here. Hey, Mac. Martin the Warrior says, oh, no, that's a response to somebody else. Um, do, 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 do. What do you use for varnishing, says Senator Waffles. Uh, well, Senator Waffles has the floor and has asked me a question. What do you use for varnishing? I still generally use Tester's Dull Coat in the tiny little spray cans. But um, I've, I'm going to be doing some more testing with some other stuff. I want to start testing out some airbrush uh, varnishes because I would love to be able to varnish in the winter. And so I want to do that, and I also have got a project that I just need to get the time and the weather to um, co cooperate. Uh, I want to test 
this um, it's this spray stuff that you're supposed to be able to spray on windows to make them look like frosted windows. You can't see through them, but the light still comes through. Uh, guy that I met at Adepticon earlier this year, his name is Joe, works for Death Ray Designs. He told me that he uses that stuff, which it says frosted right in the title, which would make you think that it would frost your models in a way that you would not like. But he says, he swears it doesn't. He showed me um, Frostgrave, uh, no pun intended, models that he had used it on. And uh, they look great, uh, really nice and flat and um, not frosted. And, you know, like sometimes when you, if you're using a spray on varnish and it's like not, it's too humid or something's wrong and it will make your models look all white and icky. Uh, they didn't look like that at all. So I want to test that out. I don't want to test it on any models that I really like, so that's why i am got to prepare and, you know, paint some, just grab some old models and spray them real quick and then put something real shiny on them and then see what happens when I put this. I want to kind of do a test, actually, of different... Uh, different kinds of um, varnishes and stuff like that. So we will see. Um, let me see here. Talking about crackle paints. Marcus says that Middle Earth SPG uh, strategy battle game looks interesting because from the little I know of it, it seems to be more focused on movement and melee combat and not combos, area effects, and rerolls. I remember the thing that impressed me the most about it when I first looked at it when it first came out, and I don't know how much it's changed, was how the the cover rules for, like, if you were trying to shoot a bow at somebody or something like that, the cover rules were very interesting and very different from what GW was doing at the time. And that's why I really liked the, con the concept. But I didn't really know anybody around who um, was playing, and I didn't want to, like, build up an entire force or two forces just so I could play with somebody. So, um, yeah. Serena says, hey, Uncle Adam, have you heard of Mutant Chronicles Warzone? I was just recently saw some models, and they look pretty neat, so I was wondering if you know anything about that. Uh, yeah, the, the current version of the game is called Warzone Resurrection. And uh, a friend of mine who works for a big shop down in the Atlanta area, uh, Gigabytes Cafe, his name is John, and uh, we hung out a little bit at, we hung out at um, uh, Origins, and we had dinner and hung out a bit. And then we also had dinner at Gen Con as well. And like most of the time during like the day during Gen Con, he was just playing Warzone. Like he was like, oh yeah, we're gonna have this big tournament and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And um, I, I, it was not as big as I thought. It was, it was like, I think it was like maybe six people. But um, so it's not necessarily at this point right now, a super well-known game. It seems in the United States, I think it's better. It's bigger over in Europe. Um, but the models do look really cool, and um, I don't really know much about the game itself, like the mechanics or anything like that. But I know that the Mutant Chronicles IP is an older IP, um, and that there's actually a movie that had somebody in it, probably. I can't remember who. I don't. I swear it had Ron Perlman in it, but there was a Mutant Chronicles movie. Um, Anyway, but yeah, so I, I have heard of the game. Um, it was made by Prodos, uh, which are the same guys that make like that um, Aliens vs. Predator stuff. And uh, yeah, that's kind of their big jam is the is the uh, the Warzone Warzone Resurrection is the current version. So yeah, they do have some really cool resin models because the resin models are always like all in one piece. You don't have to build them. They use this crazy technology uh, called Unicast, I think, which is very interesting to me. But Bob says, Vallejo matte acrylic varnish is designed specifically for airbrushing. It's quick drying and goes through my uh, Harder and Steenbeck brush beautifully. Yeah, I want to start doing some of that um, and getting used to that. So uh, that's the stuff that I'm interested in. Paul Noxie says, hey Adam, did you find your kill team, Death Watch kill team that attaching the pouches and the torso is pretty awkward? Did I find, there's so on the Death Watch guys, they have these two like divots in their chest on their armor and then you can put these like strips of like patches and ammo and grenades and junk in there. Um, the trick is, is there seems to be an ups a right side up and an upside down way to do it. So if you try to put it in an upside down, they will not want to fit at all. And it's a little difficult to spot. Like they don't give you a great indicator of what's upside down and what's... So I would definitely dry fit that first. I did notice that, but otherwise I didn't have any problem sticking them in there. Um, I mean, they're small, a little fiddly, but you put just a touch of glue inside there and just make sure you get it tapped in. And once you do like the first one or two, you can really start to figure out, oh, that's easy. I know which way is up now. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's the 
getting those in there because the problem is you could also just be like well I'm just not going to put them in there but then they look really weird because they have these weird like divots that are vertical on their chests so you kind of have to fix that um oof. somebody says they one time sprayed white primer when they thought it was dull coat that will make you want to just lay down in the driveway and not get up that's no fun at all um yeah um, people are talking about the Warzone or the Mutant Chronicles movie. Ron Perlman was in it. Hooray, I got that right. Uh, it was awful. That's, you know, I remember that. John Malkovich was in that movie. Really? Oh, you're right. He was in that movie. That must just be one of those deals because, like, I'm pretty sure Ben Kingsley was in a movie based off a video game. Blood Rain, maybe? Or something like that. And it must just be one of those deals where like, look, you show up for two days and we'll pay you $50,000 or $100,000 or whatever. And they're like, all right, fine. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Um, oh, Thomas Jane was in it. That's right. That's right. Mutant Chronicles movie all said Thomas Jane. It's one of those movies I should get on Blu-ray. Shut up. <laughs> My wife does not, does not agree with me, but, uh, you know. Um, Thomas Schmidt says, Adam, any thoughts on the skeleton summoning rules? I, it's... It seems that the scroll in print mentions raised skeletons magic, but the online PDF scroll omitted it. Confusing for a new player. Uh, I guess I haven't looked at it, to be honest with you. Um, hmm. You could... They're being a lot more responsive over on the um, Facebook page for Age of Sigmar, or basically for anything GW. You might want to bring it up there and see if they might kick in and tell you what's going on. But it's weird that the one in print... I mean, the thing is, is that it depends on what you mean by in print. Like, where did you see it in print? Like, in the old Skeleton Tome, or the new Death Rattle Tome, or... Because a lot of times, I think that the PDFs are supposed to be the most recent iteration. So if they changed things, then you might... You know what I mean? It might be one of those deals where, like, the PDF is the most right, because it was most easily changed. Um, and it depends on how long ago the book was, you know? So, yeah. What else have we got? Martin the Warrior says, Anyone else loving the new beefier orc sculpts? Judging by the ones in the blue buggy, they look a lot stockier than the ones we've seen before. I really love the orc sculpts for the um, for Shadespire. Those four guys are, are super cool looking. I mean, all the like Iron Jaw stuff is, I think, really cool. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, what else have we got here? Orc drivers do look pretty jacked. I mean, they could just be working the gym. You know, don't get me wrong. Marcus Sunburn said that John Hurt was in the Ultramarines movie, though. Yes, I've seen that as well. A friend of mine was very excited when it was coming out and bought, like, the fancy schmancy edition and then was very sad afterwards. That that was terrible. If any of you have ever seen the Ultramarines movie, ooh, not great. I mean, it was not live action. It was all computer, but it was done just... It was not good, man. Not good. Anyway, um, it's just I wish they could make a good movie. I, I hope they do. There was just some news about how... GW is like looking to start doing some TV shows and movie properties and stuff like that. I mean, and they've been working so closely with so many different video game properties, it would just make sense to do that with like some other kind of media. Like a sweet like um, Netflix, like, ooh, like a cool Netflix. The thing is, is that I don't think that they would ever get like full on Game of Thrones, nudity, swearing, cutting off horses' heads kind of stuff, because that's sort of not their thing. I mean, the violence, I'm sure they would be very, you know, keen on. Like, if you could see, like, a cool Horace Heresy, like, Netflix series, you know, and the virus bombs as they're hitting, the, the all that stuff, and the people melting and all that, that could be, yeah, I could see them doing that, but I don't think there would be a lot of crazy, you know, uh, nakedness, like uh, Westworld and stuff like that. <clears throat> Marcus says that, no, you don't want to watch Mutant Chronicles on Blu-ray. It's best viewed on a badly conditioned VHS. I don't have a VHS player anymore. I don't think that'll work. I swear I've seen it on... I know it's out on DVD. I don't know if it's on Blu-ray. I'll have to check. Um, what else have we got? Did anyone see the nod to Brand in the Space Wolves Codex? Really cool of GW to put that in. Yeah, I did hear about that. Uh, it was... Uh, I, I, someone mentioned it, and I, I've heard. I read a little short article about it, but it was about a a player uh, who I think had cancer, but was a Space Wolves player like through and through. And so they kind of mentioned him 
or a character based off of him in the in the most recent in the the space marine or the space wolves codex so that was very cool uh alexander hater says that eisenhorn on netflix would be great oh yeah no you're totally right eisenhorn on netflix would be super great that would be yeah because there's some real garbage sci-fi on 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 netflix and that would be good sci-fi in my opinion and so they could pull that off definitely uh ian says adam i bought three sets of kill team so i could fill up a four by six table i'm using a paint scheme very similar to yours and loving it well good to hear it um, I'm going to do a video, actually, probably about the paint scheme that I used so that people, because a few people have asked me, um, I can't do it this week um, because, well, so I've got to film this upcoming Friday's video probably this afternoon after lunch because I'm not going to be around from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday because I'll be at Nova. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where that's at. Uh, so I'm probably going to film that, but I'm not going to be able to do that video because I don't... Not yet. I'll have to. I, I got to get some more things done. Those types of painting videos take a lot more setup time and work. So um, that's something I'm not. I've got more stuff I've got to build for the second set of terrain that I bought. I didn't buy the second box set. I bought. They keep, they released those other terrain boxes as well. You know, like the week after or maybe the week of actually. Um, so I bought one of those terrain boxes, the ones with the statues, which are fun. So. Um, what else have we got? The new painter says, for anyone that wants a treat, look up Snipe and Wibbs' review of the Ultramarines movie. I'll have to check that out. Um, what else have we got here? Ego Queen Alexis says, if they are to make a series, I hope it is with an Inquisitor and the Acolytes. Yeah, like, that's the trick. I mean, if they were to do Eisenhorn, that would be super cool. I don't know that they could do Ravnor. Because the main character you wouldn't really see after, well, through the entire series. You Because you see Ravnor in Eisenhorn, but then uh, not afterwards. So, um, yeah, that'd be kind of interesting. Plarzoid, that's a fun name, uh, says, Question, I'm looking forward to your YouTubery seminar at Nova. Are you playing in any events? I am not playing in any, uh, well, I'm not planning on playing it in any events. I'm kicking around the idea of trying to bring at least one kill team Probably my Chaos Kill team. Um, I'm trying to like put that into my luggage because um, I did buy that little, you know, that little box. It's like a little kind of vaguely sort of squishy, soft-sided thing that they, they came out with when Kill Team came out, and it's a little zipper thing for carrying a small Kill Team. It's like black and orange, got the skull with the knife thing. Um, I bought one of those from my local shop. It was like thirty-five bucks, and so I might put that into my luggage and throw my Chaos guys in there. So I might be able to bring, but I don't have any plans currently. Um, to play in any of the events. I'm not a tournament player, so that's not my thing. Michael Strange says, late join from Raleigh. Raleigh, sorry. Um, hello. Uh, hello. Kill Team Box Terrain is built. Thanks for the motivation, and congrats again on 100,000. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad to hear you got the, the terrain built. I'm building, like I said, I'm building a second, uh, building more of the terrain now based off of that like hundred dollar box it's called the basilicum basilica basilicanum something like that and it's got those big statues in it that's honestly part of the reason i wanted more terrain and i wanted those big statues so uh yeah i got that all set up but it's not i'm not completely finished yet statues are built though they go together real easy um serena another quick question uh, I'd love to get into the 40k lore but there are so many books i have no idea where to start are there any books you could recommend um, I would tell you probably to even start with the Horus Heresy stuff, and I would tell you to, like, the earliest Horus Heresy books, like the first four, I, I don't remember the names, I know the first one I think is just called the Horus Heresy, but I could be wrong, and then there's wow, three or four other ones, those, the, those first four are in order, and they're all very good. There are lots of Horus Heresy books, and after about the third or fourth one, they're no longer in order. They're just like stories about stuff happening all during that time. Um, but those first four ones are really good. I would probably tell you to look into, um, I mean, if you're looking for something like the Ultramarines, uh, there's a big thick book that they make called the Ultramarines Omnibus, which has got like four or five novels in it. That's really good. Um, and then after that, you can go towards, like, there's a Space Wolves one that I've read that's really good. There's a bunch of Imperial Guard ones, like Gaunt's Ghosts and the First and Only and that kind of stuff are pretty good. Um, 
And then definitely I would tell you to read Eisenhorn. I'd tell you to read Eisenhorn and Ravnor, which are both big, thick books because they're made up of at least three novels each. Um, but the Eisenhorn is one of my favorites. It's just spectacular. Uh, I got myself a Harder Steenbeck Infinity airbrush. Any adv advice on how to not treat it? Um, do not spray a bunch with it and then just leave it and then go away and then come back like a couple days later and expect it to work. You have to, when you're done using it, you have to, this is what I do. I take it apart. I take my airbrush apart, take it off the hose, um, take the parts that do, don't get paint anywhere on them. So I slide out the needle, which does get paint on it. I kind of wipe that off. Be very careful of the tip because if you bend the tip, it's all screwed. Um, and I set that aside and then like the front nozzles and the main body of it, I take those parts and I actually dunk them into into water and I leave them in in water. I throw a little bit of airbrush cleaner in that water as well, but that's where I store my airbrush. Like right now in my basement, my airbrush is underwater. Um, I don't let it ever dry out, frankly. So, um, which is why I never have clogs. So, um, and they're made out of brass, so they won't rust. You know, if you get like a super cheap one, eh, maybe it'll rust, but probably not. Um, but yeah, it's that for me is honestly the way to go. I've never had a clogged airbrush. I've never had like you know airbrush. You put it all together and it just won't spray right. I've never had that problem. And I don't. I don't have a harder steam steamback. I've got um, Iowata. But the fact that it is just you know totally, it's 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 been easy. Um, so yeah, it just I would keep it wet and then that's that takes care of it. Gekillian says, Adam, are you excited by Adeptus Titanicus at all? Titans are my jam, and after finishing a Warlord, I'm stoked for Reavers and Warhounds. Um, I'm I'm glad that it's out there, and it'll be interesting to see it like at conventions and, and maybe even at the local shop. I know at least two guys at the local shop that have picked up the big box. Um, I don't know that I'm... I want to build a regular Imperial Knight, you know, like the yeah, I've got that ready to go. That's going to be part of my Adeptus Mechanicus detachment eventually. But I don't know that I want to build the small ones. I don't know why. It's just, it's not my thing. I would love to play it. I'd love to do a demo to see the, what the game system's like, because I don't know anything about the game system. I'd love to try that out at some point, like at a convention or whatever. Hopefully there'll be somebody, maybe I can play a demo at, at Nova Open. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, that's um, something I'm looking for, so... Uh, Pariah says, hey, Uncle Adam, I met you back at the Gen Con meet and greet. Just wanted to say hi. Well, hello. We, we had a good time and ate uh, some some lovely sandwiches at, at the Pop Belly. Uh, so, it was, yeah, that was a fun time. It was a good It was good to, to meet people there. Um, let me see. Still relatively new to the hobby. Is there an Age of Sigmar version of Kill Team I can play my deep kin in while I paint and build my full army up? Um, there is Age of Sigmar Skirmish which is a little add-on book. You have to have the normal Age of Sigmar rules, but they're free, so it doesn't really, you know, it's not that big of a deal. The Skirmish book, I think, was like 10 bucks. Um, I don't know if they'll have the stats in there or the points or whatever they call it. They call it Renown or something like that. I don't know if they'll have the points in there for Deepkin because that book came out before the Deepkin did. So you might have to look online to see if you can find that information. Um, but yeah, you could use the Skirmish rules. It's just basically a smaller scale. Age of Sigmar Skirmish is basically like what Kill Team used to be. Kill Team used to be a little cheap book you bought that was an add-on to regular 40k. You had to have the regular 40k book and you had to have the codex that you needed for your army and then you paid like 10 bucks and you got this little thin book and it told you how to play Kill Team. Well now Kill Team's its own rule set so you don't need anything else except for that book so you can play it and now uh, Age of Sigmar Skirmish is the cheap little book you use to play. But the trick is is that the main rules for Age of Sigmar are free and the War Scrolls are free, so you don't have to buy other stuff like you did with the old version of Kill Team. Let's just say that. Um, let me see here. Andrew says, still relatively new to the... Oh, I just answered that one. Um, ooh, Titanicus will be good once they make it full epic. Just Titans equals a bit Z, which means sleepy. Um, Irrational Gaz says... That makes me super excited. I really thought that diminished, it diminished the orcs when they homogenized them. I'm not quite sure that was a response to somebody else. Um, what else? Titanicus really seems like it's intended to scratch an almost mech warrior itch. 
with its reactor management shenanigans. See, yeah, that's that. That I could definitely see. Um, I could see that. Um, do 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 do. Oh, good. Someone's using their leaf blower outside on a Sunday morning. That's awesome. Uh, David Cherenkov says, I'm a huge fan of uh, RH Warhammers. I don't know. Okay. Um, well, that's not a question. All right. Uh, VJ Morph says, I have the book. It was $10. That's the skirmish book for Age of Sigmar. I've got that too someplace in the basement, I want to say. Evil Eyeball says, I have been having a hankering for painting lately, but I live in a place filled with wildfire smoke at the moment, so I can't go outside and prime. Yes, that's that would probably be a problem. I could easily see that. Definitely. Um, Ron Scott says, what is all this talk about Disney? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not talking about Disney. Am I talking about Disney? I don't think so. Um... Hello. Anyone discussed yet Forge World's recent ascent? Yeah, we, we talked about that. I don't really know much about it, and I've never really been a big Forge World guy, so, um, I've, yeah, I got, I got, no, I got nothing. I've, say, I've seen that they're raising the prices, but I haven't read any of the articles, so it's not really my thing. Uh, Nathan asks, will you be playing in any of the events at Nova? No, I will not. Um, I'll be doing two seminars, and I'll be walking around talking to people. Um, I'm looking forward to Nova because I've never been out there before. Uh, there's a lot of, they're really getting deep into the hobby seminars and stuff. So that's one of the reasons I'm going out there too, is to, to be able to teach my YouTube classes. But they're definitely looking at adding more and more. They've got, I mean, Sam's going to be out there as well. Painter Sam. Sam Lenz is going to be out there doing classes. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. We're going to have a good time. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to bring some, maybe a little bit of, um, what do you call them? Uh, I'm going to try to bring my Chaos Kill Team. I can't, i got to close this window. Hang on. Uh, sorry about that. I'm really looking forward to those neighbors moving away. They are selling their house. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be... Um, I'm going to bring my Chaos Kill Team, which is basically just Chaos Space Marines and some cultists, and bring those along in my luggage and see if I can get together and play a little bit. Um, potentially, I don't know what kind of, like, open... i got to move my thing here. I don't know what kind of open gaming there's, there's going on there, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. So I don't have any plans. Like, I'm not a tournament player, so that's one of the reasons why I'm not really playing anything. But I am looking forward to hopefully getting some demos while I'm there. Uh, Pariah says, The Warhammer community page has the points for teams for Skirmish that were released afterwards after the book. Well, excellent. That's very good information. So yeah, if you do want to play Age of Sigmar Skirmish, they've got the renown points, according to Pariah, on the... Um, Warhammer community page, so you can find the, the renowned points that you can play skirmish, even with stuff that's been released since, like the the Deepkin, aka Wet Elves. Uh, David says, "See you at Nova. We will see you as well." Um, Uncle Adam, did you see the new battle for Palinor Fields box? I, I haven't looked at the internals at all. I've seen that they're releasing it, but I haven't. I've seen like a, like a picture, you know, like of a bunch of stuff, but I've not seen like the individual things and like what's going on in there. So yeah. Hi Varmi asks, Hi Adam, what are your thoughts on Orktober? Want to get some for Kill Team, but nervous a prime style orc will diminish the current stock. Um, hmm. I, I don't really know much about orcs. That's one army I've never really played. I have kicked around the idea. I mean, I'm looking forward to painting the orcs for Shadespire because I've never painted orcs before and I love the fact that I can paint four. That all being said, I should probably take a closer look at Kill Team because I might want to build a Kill Team of Orcs. Um, I do own some Orcs that a friend gave me years ago that are painted. Um, it's mostly boys. Um, and there's some like trucks and some those helicopter things, def copters, which obviously you can't use in Kill Team. But uh, I, I don't know. I, sh I should look into it because I think it'd be a lot of fun. So... Adam, about to hit build mode for a few weeks to build the Kill Team Box, Gangs of Kamara, and Blight War. Any hot tips? Um, 
Don't use too much glue. I think that's a hot tip. I, I was screwing that up a little bit myself. Um, the right glue for the right job, uh, definitely, I like to use the normal CA glue for most things. Um, if you can get yourself a little bit of this type of stuff, it doesn't have to be Army Painter, but it's basically, some people call it Zip Kicker, it's um, Activator, uh, there's a lot of different names for it, but it's basically like a spray that when you have some CA glue and you put it together, you can go psh, and then it will just kind of harden up real quick and then stick. Uh, activator. Um, this is called Army Painter Magic Super Glue Activator. So yeah, but you can, there's a lot of different um, uh, brands. The Zappa Gap people make one called Zip Kicker, I think, and there's a bunch of different things, but it works super well. And it's, I, I watched uh, uh, this past, this Earlier this year at Adepticon, I took a class from a guy about converting and building and things like that. And I cannot think of his name now, but he was like Spanish. Paulo? Something. Anyway, it was super good. And he, like, he must have picked this up as he was showing us. He picked this, not this one, he had a different bottle, much bigger one. Uh, because he was used it on every join. Like, everything he did, he was like, and he was just constantly like, Psst. and um, so that helps a lot. But if you're doing any clear, like, flying bases and things like that, like, I was doing a clear flying base yesterday for the little tow, tow uh, recon drone, um, you want to use plastic cement instead of CA glue because CA glue will give off fumes and then cloud the, the clear plastic. So that's a big deal. Use plastic cement for the clear stuff and everything else. I like to use CA. But other people like to use plastic cement for everything. I don't like it because, I don't know, I just don't. But anyway... Adam, one thing I've never heard you discuss much is painting on airbrush primer with a brush. I use this method in my apartment for the time being until I can afford an airbrush. I've never painted on airbrush primer with a brush. That's probably why I don't talk about it. Um, I do have some primer from Reaper that is designed to be brush on, which I have used. I don't generally use it to prime an entire model. I generally use it to, like if I've painted, if I primed a model a dark color and now I want to, you know, have a... Caucasian style skin tone, I will use the white brush on primer as the first layer to basically, so I'm not trying to put Caucasian color over black primer or over a very dark gray primer or over red primer or whatever I've, whatever I've primed the entire model in. So I will then throw the white on there and then that's like a good base to then start building up and getting a flesh tone from, you know, like a Caucasian-y looking one. Um, yeah, so that's, I think that's it, not a, that's what I use the brush prim on primer for, but I've never brushed on an entire primer you know what I mean for like the entire model I've never done that I don't think well no I take that back I did use uh, gesso one time for that black gesso which I had to get from the art supply store gesso for those of you who don't know is the stuff that you generally paint onto a canvas before you put oil paint and stuff on it and it's so that it a it makes the canvas white and not canvas colored and also uh, especially with oil paints, it protects the canvas because if you put oil paint directly on the canvas, over time the stuff in the oil paint will eat the canvas. So you put this gesso on there to kind of protect the canvas from the paint. Um, but you can also use it, you can technically use it as a brush-on primer for models too. You put it on there and it will look like it's filled in all the detail, but when it dries it constricts and so it sinks into all the stuff and it actually works relatively well. You may need to water it down a little bit. I would test a little bit. But if you are in a situation where you just can never spray prime, um, gesso, which is spelled G-E-S-S-O, is something you could look for at your local um, art supply store, and you might be able to be able to go, you know, there and use that. Um, let's see here. Wife and kids gone for the day. Hobby shop trip imminent. Well, yeah, I can see that. What else have we got? Uh, Zachary says, I hear cicadas. Yeah, there was definitely some cicadas before. And there, you'll probably still hear some. I don't know. Um, what else have we got here? Carl O'Toole says, I am a fan of Tamiya Ultra Thin Glue, the fast set kind. It's meant for airplanes and stuff, but it works for all plastic. Isn't as messy as normal poly cement. Hmm. Tamiya Ultra Thin Glue, fast set. I'll have to look at the local... Where would I find it? I think that Hobby Town here in Hobby Town USA, I think carries a bunch of Tamiya stuff, or is it Tamiya? Tamiya, Tamiya. Anyway, um, 
I should look there and see what kind of stuff's going on there. Uh, VJ Morph says Gesso for priming. Interesting choice. Yeah, I I I had heard about it from somebody else, and um, originally they were like, oh, wet it, you know, water it down 50-50, and I tried that, and that did not work at all because then when I brushed it onto the model, it just beat it up. You know what I mean? Like maybe I didn't mix it well enough, or I don't know what the deal was, but it just didn't work. So I tried it again on the model, um, just 100%, just straight out of the pot. And um, it, I think it worked fine. It was a decent primer, you know. Um, but yeah, usually gesso is in white. But if you look, you can usually also find it in black if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, what is the worst paint job you have done? And what have you learned from it regarding all the topics you've talked about? Well, that's a good question. Uh, probably some of the worst paint jobs I ever did were some of my first and it was probably um, Battletech back in mm, college. I think I started to paint my Battletech stuff in college. And when I did, I was using enamels. I was using the old testers, you know, little glass jars, the little square ones, uh, which you use normally for airplanes. And uh, at least back in the day, I used it for airplanes and cars because I used to build airplane models when I was a kid. And so I still had a bunch of those little square bottles laying around. So I was like, oh, I'll just use this stuff and I'll paint up these uh, Battletech models. And it did not work. It did not work. I mean, it worked okay. It, it covered the models, but they look like garbage. Um, because you can't do washes and like highlighting is very difficult with enamels, I found, and all that kind of stuff. So it just did not work out. And so that taught me um, to start doing more research. And that's when I learned more about acrylics and things like that. And so that's when I, yeah, definitely went with acrylics. Michael says that cicadas are the jam band of the insect world. Even the other bugs hate them. Well, yeah, they're, they're noisy, that's for sure. Like, if you're like a bug and you're just out there hanging around doing bug stuff, you'd just be like, could you stop, please? You're just nonstop with the buzzing. Could you just, I'm a bug and I like to buzz, but this is over, it's just too much. And so I get that. That's totally, that totally understands. Torch says, I use gesso on foam terrain to seal and base coat. You can add paint. Um, yeah, that's the other thing too, is like if you are going to use like any kind of foam, whether it's like that pink insulation foam that you, that in the colder areas of the world, you put on the outside of the house, you know, underneath the siding, or if you even use like the white bumpy kind of insulation stuff, like you like when you get electronics and you take them out of a box and there's a, that white, you know, foam that's made up of those little dots, um, that stuff. If you try to spray paint that, you will melt it because the propellant for some reason melts the foam. So what you need to do is coat it with something else first before you start trying to air, you know spray paint it or whatever. Um, airbrush wouldn't be a problem, but it would take forever to try to airbrush something that big. So what a lot of people will do is cover it either with latex house paint first and then spray over it, or gesso would also work too. That would make sense. Um, Hippie says, Adam, did you ever get into Lord of the Rings SPG? I, I bought the original book and read it and was like, that's really kind of cool. I like those rules. And then I never played. Uh, Gaddis says, what's the best glue for resin miniatures? I like to use CA glue. I don't know if it's the best, but it's what I use. Um, I don't think plastic cement would work super hot because I think plastic cement is designed more for like the the ABS type glues or ABS type plastics and stuff like that. I think, I think that's why it works. Um, Skyvolk, Skyvolk said, I stopped using gesso for miniatures. It's not bad, but it's less durable than can primers, but I loved using it mixed with sand as a textured paint basing material. Yeah, I could see that. And you're not wrong. It is not, it will not stick to plastics as much as spray can will you can rub off gesso if you're not careful. Um, like once you've put paint on it, it will stick down a little bit better, obviously, once you've painted over it. But if like, you know, if, once you've put on the, the gesso and you've let it dry overnight, if you rub it up against something, you could rub the gesso off. It's not nearly as sturdy, obviously, as like spray can type paint. But, um, you know, then again, it's spray paint. Spray can is not, uh, you know. Alan says, nothing wrong with jam bands. Well, no, I mean, it's, you know, it's what you like, but it's the, the jam bands frequently are, you know, people, uh, it's like, I don't want to say it's low-hanging fruit, but like people will talk, you know, it's one of those types of things, like Nickelback. It's not like Nickelback, but you see what I'm saying. Anyway. 
Nick Miller says, I've been painting Kill Team Terrain and I was getting more and more worried about how it was looking. Added a wash and all my worries disappeared. Wash is, I want to say it was, someone else said it first, but I know that Mini Wargaming used to have a shirt that just had a picture of like, like a bottle of uh, wash on it, like a GW style bottle of wash. And it just said something like liquid talent or something like that. And, and it's true. I mean, you throw you throw wash over whatever you're painting generally, and it will generally kind of help to fix all kinds of sins. So, yeah. Paul Noxie says, Adam, any plans to get a lictor for your kill team, for your Tyranid kill team? I'm assembling one now. Uh, no, I don't like the look of the sculpt. Like, I love the warriors. They look awesome. And I love the gene stealers and even, like, the termagants and stuff like that. But, man, that lictor is an old... If they make a new lictor model, I will probably be on board. But right now, it's not my... It is not my cup of tea. So, yeah, not not really looking forward to that. Um, I would like to have one. I mean, they're, they, they've they got great stats, but, man, that's just not a good-looking model, in my opinion. Um, Will Stevens, or Steffens, I might be apologize, or saying that wrong, says, Do I need data cards and a book to play Kill Team? You need a book. I would not say you need kill, uh, data cards, but you definitely need the books. You have the, the stats and the you know the point costs and all that kind of stuff but you don't need the data cards really um, um, DJ Todd B. Harris says I'm learning so much today especially using gesso on foam yeah I mean it it works pretty well for that kind of stuff <coughs> excuse me uh, let me see here uncle my hmm my uncle Rick is a human cicada oh that's weird when we're sitting around at family uh, barbecues, the he, he says, uh, I don't, with the git fiddles. I don't know what a git fiddle is. He says, hey, it's a free concert. If they want better, they got to pay the cover. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, sorry, I don't know what a, I don't know what a git fiddle is. Sorry. Um, Carl Tool says, plastic cement doesn't work on resin. That you are correct. Poly cement is actually a chemical weld. It doesn't affect the resin. Yeah, I kind of thought that was the case. Um, you would probably have to use CA glue with that on resin in those situations. Um, Devin Jones says, The Tabletop Crafters sub-users Mod Podge with black paint as a primer on foam. Tabletop Crafters sub, sub... Anyway, so yeah, if you throw some black paint into Mod Podge and you put it on foam, then that'll help to seal the foam and probably also get rid of some of the telltale foam bumpiness look especially if it's that white kind um and then that can help the surface i think look a lot better i could definitely see that um kevin trudeau says i think my first minis were a pack a, a mix of old enamels i had lying around and apple crate craft paint it was not pretty yeah mixing those two together is not going to be great you're not going to be happy about that um, is tabletop gaming in general getting more or less popular over the years, in your opinion? How's the game scene aging? Uh, I would say that tabletop gaming is growing in general. And when I say tabletop gaming, I mean also board games and RPGs and Magic the Gathering style stuff and also our wargaming. I would say all of it's growing astoundingly. Uh, over the last 10 years, between board games and, I mean, Magic's been around for, what, 25 or whatever? Um but RPGs have been around for 50 or so, or whatever it is almost. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. It's, um, it, it's, it's doing just fine, thanks. Uh, yeah, tabletop gaming is definitely expanding and growing, which is amazing because a lot of people were like, when video games started getting really big, they were like, well, people aren't going to play board games anymore. People aren't going to play role-playing games anymore and all that kind of stuff. And that has just not been the case. Um, there's a lot of people out there who also want to do this type of stuff. They want to do the stuff where they're playing... You know, like when you want to play with friends and you want to get together and have some, some maybe some adult beverages and some snacks and play like some fun board games, that's very difficult to do with like all of you sitting around playing video games. <clears throat> you know, role playing games give you a type of thing that role playing games and video games, like tabletop role playing games, give you stuff that video games can't, frankly. Um, you know, the hobby aspect behind wargaming and all that kind of stuff is is huge for a lot of people. So that's why that's a big deal. And then, of course, just the Magic the Gathering style collectible card games. Those are very popular just because people love to collect and people love combos and people love tournaments and that kind of across the table, face to face sort of thing. So, um, yeah, no, it's been getting it's been very, very popular um, just because also nerd culture 
in general has gotten a lot more popular. You know, all the big uh, superhero movies that are all the huge blockbusters now, all the, uh, you know, all that stuff is just really taken off. So definitely. Get fiddle equals guitar. Ah, well, there we go. Paul Noxie says, yes, the Lichter looks dated. Hopefully they make a new one. Yeah, I think that would be a lot of, I think that would be um, uh, cool too. Tyler asks, Adam, in regards to the Lichter, are you against proxying to use one? I'm not against proxying. I just don't know what I would use to proxy. You know what I mean? Like if I could find some other company that made something that looked close so that you could just look at it and go, okay, I bet that's a Lichter. I mean, that would be cool, but I haven't, you know, I mean, I guess you could kit bash some stuff and whatever, but I didn't, I just didn't look into it. I was trying to crank out Tyranids pretty quick. So I was like, well, I'll just go with Warriors then because the Warriors are awesome looking. So I went with Warriors and then, um, and then went from there. That was easy. Uh, Daniel asks, do you think Army Painter is a good brand to start painting? I think so. I mean, that's really the, the, at least it seems to be their focus area where they're like doing all those different colored primers so that you can just prime, like wash, do some detail, wash again, do a little bit more detail highlight and be done. You know, that's kind of their thing. Um, they've got lots of stuff on their website for like, oh, if you want to paint skeletons, here's how you do it. And then you do, 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 and they've got step by step. Um, I think it's decent stuff. I like their brushes too. Um, I use them on and off. Um, they're, they've got a bunch of, they've got some interesting washes that I kind of like, but they're very different than Games Workshop washes. So you have to take that into consideration when you use them. So that's pretty much about it. Uh, Ben says that Magic the Gathering isn't growing if sales are anything to go by. Magic the Gathering goes up and down. And currently it seems to be a bit of a down. Uh, but it will probably cycle back up again. Uh, like, at least that's the way that store owners that I, I'm friends with have told me. Like, you would be... You would be unkind to your bottom line if you decided not to carry Magic the Gathering at your game store. Um, let's just say that. But yeah, there are times when it does... It's constantly, you know, up and down. Like, there's times when it's like, eh, it's not selling very well. And there's other times when you can't keep anything in stock. And it kind of depends on the sets. Depends on how a lot of different things... So, yeah. Um, VJ Morph says, some other company, huh? And then notes, first Morph Minis model should be a Lictor proxy. That'd be, yeah, sure. I mean, someone's got to make one. Why not? Um, Randall, the social aspect of tabletop gaming is very underappreciated. Shooting the shit, trading advice after a game is always a highlight for me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not anti-video game. I've been you know I, i've been a video gamer for a long time i don't do it nearly as much as i used to but i used to do it a lot when i did it though one of the big things that really got me going was the fact that i would at first go to land parties and then eventually started running land parties from about late november 1998 to mid 2004 2005 somewhere in there i used to run this big land party me and another guy used to run this big land party it started out small it was like five of us and uh, but eventually it grew to the point where i think our biggest one we had 98 players um but we had these land parties we would do like once a quarter and, and um and it was it was awesome it was so much fun uh, it was spectacular it was a lot of work but it was a lot of fun um but that was again the more social aspect of it that was the the, the playing and like you know you, you shoot somebody in the game or whatever and then you can you know that that guy's sitting over there and you can be like yeah you know or whatever and then he's be like mm. and it's just i don't know it's it that part of it was a lot of fun whereas just sitting on the couch and playing multiplayer against other people you'd be like all right well i killed that guy eh, you know sip yeah I, I don't know what else you're gonna do it's uh yeah definitely i think that that social aspect at least for a person like myself is something that's important other people love the maybe more detached kind of from from the social uh portion of video gaming which is also fine as well uh joshua daniel flores says miniature wargaming has boomed over here in the philippines well that's cool we've had a sizable community ever since the 90s but the amounts at least doubled or tripled over the last five years well that's really cool um yeah definitely uh love the old metal lictor i have two if you want to kit mash up a lictor i recommend starting with the brood lord from death watch overkill and adding scything claws onto its shoulders yeah i could see that i could see that it's big enough i mean it's not well yeah i have to look at it a little bit but that's not that's not a bad idea brian schmidt says adam do you play any tabletop rpgs or are you exclusively a wargamer we're playing a starfinder campaign at work and we're having a blast with it 
Um, currently, we are playing at work uh, sometime. We haven't done it in a while now because we've been very busy. But for a while, on Tuesdays, we were doing, during lunch, we were playing D&D 5th Edition. Um, when I, My very first tabletop game that wasn't like Monopoly or Sorry or stuff like that was... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, like in the fifth grade, so that, that I've I've got a background in RPGs, but um, I hadn't played any played it played any for quite some time, and then this last, like I said, about the last three four months, we've played on and off at work. Um, fifth edition, fifth edition looks great. I mean, it's it's really I think interesting. So yeah, anyway, but it was a uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, but I've not I don't do it frequently. I guess I don't do it with other people too much. I know there is now a new 40k game called Wrath and Glory. I think it's called Wrath and Glory. That's a 40k RPG that came out. Um, but I've I almost bought it at Gen Con, but I was like, eh, but it, is there anybody that? Because then I'd have to run it probably, and I was just like, eh, you know, thinking about time. I mean, I should have just bought it and just read it just for fun, just to see cool stuff. But I did not. Well, partially it was because I was also. Constantly during Gen Con this year, I was thinking, is this going to be something I can take back with me in the car? Because there was four of us in the car, and it was kind of tight. So I couldn't like buy anything real big, because then I wouldn't be able to get it back. So that was sort of a problem. Um, Torch says, I didn't have a computer in the LAN party days. Um, yeah, LAN parties were a lot of fun. They were, they were a good time. I mean, I don't... I don't know. These days, the concept of taking my PC apart and, and lugging it to someplace else and then putting it all back together again doesn't make me want to do it. But you know what I would love? I would love to, like, something that's super portable, like the uh, like the Nintendo Switch, like, get together with a whole bunch of people and play, like, a really, not just, like, Mario Kart, but something really interesting, maybe a little crunchy, um, like, on those, something very small and easy to handle, you know, or if it was, like, if laptops, laptops can game pretty well these days, but they're pretty expensive when you go that direction. But I would love to see something that's very portable that a bunch of people could sit down and play and have a really good time, and it wouldn't take, you know, like, because I can't tell you how many little LAN parties we tried to do, like, in people's houses and with, like, blow fuses and stuff because we brought too many computers over and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's it's a problem. Um, we had a LAN party one time, in we, there were not enough fuses in the building. Like, we had probably 30 people in this building, and it was an old building, and we were blowing really old fuses. <laughs> so, like, from World War One type fuses, I think. Like, those big cardboard tube ones that have got the metal cap on the top that looks like an explosive. Like, just boom, just blew one of those apart. That was no good. Um, yeah, so... Anyway... Uh, what else have we got here? Uncle Adam, I'm also tired of the treadmill of new hotness in games that are frankly buggy pieces of $70 garbage. The longevity of tabletop gaming is a big attractor to me and why I've drifted away. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see what you're saying. I mean, talking about video games in that situation, I can totally see that. Uh, for me, lately, the only video games that I've been playing lately at all... Uh, I've been playing, now that they've released the newest big update for No Man's Sky, I play that sometimes at night. Like, I'll be down in the basement and I'll be hobbying, and then, because I'm old, uh, I will eventually get an eye strain headache, because I'm looking over the top of my glasses and I'm working on this thing and I'm painting or whatever, and then eventually I'll give myself an eye strain headache, and then I'll be like, alright, and I'll go upstairs, or come up to, you know, the first floor, and then I will, if, like, my wife's not watching television or something like that, I might sit and play a little bit of like No Man's Sky because it's at a further distance and I'm not so close focusing and it helps my eyes for a bit and then I go to bed or whatever. Um, I did actually do a Twitch stream of me playing No Man's Sky a couple of weeks ago. I think two people were watching during the time. It did not save. Like I got to figure out how to do that. But um, yeah, I just, I hadn't done that in a long time. Um, I don't know if there's any interest in that. One of the things I wanted to talk about today about the... Uh, post 100,000 subscriber uh, plans for the channel and like what I was thinking about doing next and kind of things like that and what kind of things might be coming down the pipe. One of the things was I was thinking about Twitch. Now I don't want to sit and do like, I, I like using YouTube for this kind of live show. I wouldn't want to do this type of live show on Twitch, frankly, I don't think. I don't see the point to it. And one of the big benefits of this is that this becomes like a podcast that people can listen to years later on YouTube when they're sitting and painting, and, and, and that's cool. And I like that. And with Twitch, um, you can save it for a while, but right now, currently, I don't think you can save it for much longer than a couple of weeks. So I wouldn't see that. But 
I would potentially, maybe, I don't know. I'm just trying to think if there's some other way to use Twitch once in a while. I don't know. I, I, I really don't like the concept of just doing it once in a while. But I don't know that I also have the time to do it super frequently. But I do think about Twitch here and there. Because I know it's getting very popular and a lot of people like it. If you haven't already, you should go definitely check out Sam's Twitch. He's been killing it on Twitch. He's usually streaming on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and it's usually around 2 p.m. Central Time, which is our time zone. Um, so 2 p.m. Central Time, uh, he is on Twitch, which I think is around 7 or 8 GMT p.m. I don't, I'm not sure, because uh, of the you know, it's summer. Anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, so he's been doing that. So it's uh, Samson Arts. If you look up Samson Arts, S-A-M-S-O-N-A-R-T-S, on Twitch, you can find him, and you should definitely go and follow him and get notifications when he's streaming and, and check him out. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't think I could just sit down and Twitch paint because when I paint, I want to listen to audio, like audiobooks and podcasts and stuff like that. So I wouldn't be talking. Like, he's super good about like talking to the audience and like answering questions, like I'm trying to do here. Um, but if you go way back to the beginning of the Every Other Sunday show, I was trying to build plague monks, a bunch of Skaven plague monks, while doing this, and it did not work out. Like, I can't focus on that and the chat at the same time. It just doesn't work out. So this kind of chat show has worked out a little bit better for this kind of thing. But um, I don't know. Like I said, I would like to do something with Twitch. I think it would be interesting maybe to do video games based off of war game properties not that no man's sky is in that situation so i don't know i'm not sure for a while i thought about doing like because there are video games out there i mean you could play uh like the BattleTech game i've got that well i've got the i've got the original beta of that i don't think i have i'd have to buy the new the new version but i could play you know maybe BattleTech uh and then talk to people while i'm doing it like playing the single player mode or something like that i don't know i've been kicking around the idea i would have to do some relatively serious sort of hardware shenanigans too. Like this PC can run Battletech, I think, but if I want to do something a little bit fancier or something a little bit older, or just the fact that I have to get a capture card and maybe a second computer, I don't even know. So I don't know. If people are interested in that stuff, I'm not sure. I will see, but I don't know if Twitch is the way to go or not. Um, so what else have we got? How are people responding to that question? Uh, Mokalesi says, did I actually catch you live this time? Y well, yes. Currently, you yes. Um, da -da -da -da. When you think about the longevity of collecting minis and being able to play games versus video games, the value holds up better with minis. I don't even want to know what I've spent on video games. Yeah, there's some definite benefit to that. You can easily, like, right now, if you and a couple of friends were just like, you know what, our favorite version of uh, Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000 is third edition. You guys could sit down and start playing third edition. But I, there are plenty of video games right now that I played five, six, seven, eight, ten years ago that I probably could not play right now. You know what I mean? Um, not very easily. So there's the, I think there's a benefit for that. Um, someone just said use Twitch for extra long streams and product reveals. Yeah, I could, yeah, maybe. Um, Joe says that uh, Sam is killing it with Twitch. It's very entertaining. Yeah, very, very, very much so. Um, is Sam the Tau for Sale guy? Yes, yes, he is. That's Sam. He's a pro painter, award winning painter, um, crystal brush uh, trophy winners, um, uh, golden demon trophy winners. He was the privateer press. Grandmaster at Gen Con a couple of years back, um, so he was like the big you know, best in show winner for that one. So yeah, he's he's super good and he's a great guy. Um, if you're going to be at Nova Open, he'll be there teaching classes and we're going to hang out. So there's that too. Uh, Jay Weir says I started listening to last podcast on the left. Thank you for that. It is awesome. Yeah, they're they're awesome. <laughs> I, I listen to them when I'm painting quite a bit, and then I get caught up and then I have to like wait for a while and I listen to other stuff and then I come back and I kind of binge. Um, yeah. 
Jomo says, sometimes I go back to favorite console or PC games when I get hobby burnout or vice versa. Yeah, for me, it's not so much burnout. For me, it's just literally like it's late in the evening and my eyes are starting to hurt. So I need to focus on something that's more than, you know, six inches from my face. And so it's an eye strain thing. And so I'll go either sometimes I'll just watch YouTube, you know, on the TV because that's how I send mostly watch most of my YouTube is on television. Uh, but otherwise, I'll, I'll maybe lately I've been playing this um, No Man's Sky because it's a hoot. Um, so, yeah. Question. You said you listen to audiobooks while painting. Do you ever listen to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History? It is my go-to. I have had a bunch of people tell me about it, and I just haven't pulled the trigger. I don't know why. It's because I've listened to so many other podcasts, I guess, and some audiobooks. So I haven't ever been like, geez, what should I listen to? I don't ever have that issue. But I I have heard plenty of it that I should probably do that. Um Uh, Brian Griffith says, maybe Uncle Adam plays Dawn of War, the good ones. Um, I played the original, and I think I played 2, Dawn of War 2, a little bit, but not too very much. But I did I, I did, I did enjoy the, 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 um, the original. Um, Carl O'Toole says that the Mordheim video game is very good. It's almost digital tabletop. I think I've got that for the PS4, I think. Well, I know I've got Vermintide, the original one. I don't think I have the new one. But that one's more of a first-person shooter. That's basically like Left 4 Dead, but with, with Skaven. Um, but the, yeah, there is a Mordheim game that is very turn-based and stuff like that. And that looks kind of cool. Yeah, Battletech video game. JP Got Rockets, you are not wrong. Um, you could do like a once a, once a month what I've been playing stream for an hour or so. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is I think that Twitch, you need to do it more than an hour or so once per month. I think. I mean, I don't know. I should probably look more into Twitch strategy and whatever it is i mean i it's not like i would be looking to get a bunch of subscribers and go through all that because i think that i wouldn't be doing it enough to to warrant subscribers and stuff so i just don't know if i because i could just do the same stuff live on youtube i could just decide i'm gonna play some video games and stuff and just stream it on youtube but then it's gonna sit in my youtube i could tell it not to save in my youtube i don't know yeah i gotta figure it out these are some of the things that i think about now that i'm you know, it, as the channel grows, I am thinking more about the other things that I want to do with it. Um, I've talked in the past about how I want to start having a show. Uh, basically, I want to try to start doing a video every Monday between the every other Sunday show. So in this situation, it wouldn't be tomorrow. It wouldn't be tomorrow that there would be a show because there was the every other Sunday show today. But it would be next Monday. Okay. And it wouldn't be a live show. It would be like a video, kind of like my Friday videos, or a pre-recorded, pre-edited thing. But it would be more of a series. Like I've talked in the past about doing uh, Uncle Adam's Miniature Hot Mess, which is basically me taking some model that I got on eBay or whatever, stripping it, repainting it, redoing it, making it look nicer. Um, and like that kind of thing. That will take a bit more work, production-wise. Um, I've kicked around a couple of different ideas like making you know hobby progress vlogs that's also again a little bit more work because it's not something I can do quickly it's something especially with hobby progress like that I've got to do like shoot for a while but now I've primed it and this is what I'm going to do and then you come back later like all right now I've done this it's probably not something that would be like a very quick process which is why it's been troublesome the thing that I have found is that when you are let's say you want to start losing weight or you just want to get more fit you can really want to do that and you can start to do it and try to kind of make it happen and be s steady with it, be um, consistent with it. But until you actually make it part of your life, until you actually make it something, you know, like, like hobbying, like, you know, if you're like every once in a while I need to hobby. Okay, cool. And then you don't think about it and you're watching TV and you're doing other stuff and months go by and then you go, oh, I should probably go out and paint some more. That's one thing. But when you are making it part of your life that it's kind of, I don't want to say constantly on your mind, I don't want you to go crazy, but when it's constantly something you're like, okay, well, what, what am I going to do tonight? If hobby is the first thing that pops into your head because you've gotten into such a rhythm with it and you know you want to keep going further with it, that's when you actually start to get gains. When you decide, oh, I'm going to go on a diet. That's one thing. But when you ch are able to eventually finally change your lifestyle and stop eating like this or start exercising more like that, then it no longer becomes, oh, I'm doing this now because I'm trying to have this effect. It's just because I'm just doing this now. You know what I mean? Like this is a new thing. Um, 
if you knew me back in the 2000s, uh, there was a lot more of me. I was a much bigger guy. Um, and I, it, it took a, a good life change to get smaller. And I'm still large. But um, it, it took a life change to get to like that. Me making the Friday videos every single Friday for nearly three years now, that became a life change to make that happen. It was a situation where now I just don't, like it's not an option to me almost. Like if something, if there's not a Friday video, something has gone horribly wrong. Um, you know, like, like a big kind of catastrophic issue because it's just a thing that I'm going to do. It is part of my life. I'm never like, oh, geez, that's right. I got to make a video this week. It's never a th an afterthought, you know? So trying to then make that every other Monday video become like that, it's taking some time. Uh, I've, I've got some irons in the fire, but to finally like make the life change and become, and there will probably be starts and stops. Um, I was very lucky with the Friday videos that I made that change and then I pushed and pushed and pushed and I held on to it until it just became a thing that was part of my life. I need to be able to do that with the Monday videos too. And I think that would be another thing. It's not that, like, there are plenty of channels out there that put out videos every single day and I don't want to go down that road. I absolutely don't. I think it's not great for the channel. I know a lot of people say, oh no, it's really the algorithm. That's really, that's the thing you got to do. I don't know. I really don't. I'm not sure about it. Um, so... I don't know. I want to make some changes. I want to add a little bit more, you know, kind of information. I want more shows for you guys to watch, but I also have to be able to fit it into my life because this is not my day job. So there's that too. But uh, these are kind of the things that I'm thinking about now that it's, you know, like in the next couple of days, it hasn't flipped over yet, but in the next couple of days, when you look at my channel on a browser, like, you know, through your laptop or through your desktop, um, hopefully I just got the email last night. I will now be a verified YouTube channel. So it'll say Tabletop Minions and then there'll be that little kind of shape with the check mark in it, meaning that they've verified that I am cool or whatever, um, which you can't get, I guess. Well, you can't ask for it until you're after 100,000. There are channels out there that are lower than 100,000 that for some reason have it, but um, it's a special thing that if you want to request it, you have to wait till you hit 100,000. So I, I did that and I got the email last night saying, oh yeah, you know, you're good. You're good. But, and they said it'll show up in a couple of days. So that'll be, that's just for me, frankly, kind of nerd stuff. But, you know, that kind of stuff, like those are the types of things I'm looking at. I, I don't, I, I, I may even try to travel a little bit more next year. Um, you know, this year it was Las Vegas Open, Adepticon, Origins, Gen Con, uh, Valhalla. But before that, Nova Open, which I'm going to next week. There might be a couple others I might go to next year as well. I don't know. We'll see. But um, anyway, that's that's kind of the stuff I've been thinking about lately with with um, the 100,000. And I, again, want to say thank you to everybody who's been a subscriber. And I'm, I'm really glad that we've gotten this channel to the, where it is. And it's been because of you guys. So um, absolutely. Anyway, I think that the chat got stuck. And so I'm going to be trying to scroll through and see how I can answer things here. Um, oh, goodness. Yep, it, it did get stuck. Let's see. All right, I'm going to back up a bit, try to catch some things. All right. Um, Hardcore History is also a good Wrath of the Cons and series on World War One are amazing. Okay, that's cool. Um, VJ Morph says, hot mess, question mark, which I did talk about a bit. Um a lot of people talking about hardcore history. I know it's one of the biggest podcasts out there. It's really cool. Um, what else have we got? VJ Morph says, bring on the mess. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to get there. Um, a lot of people like the hot mess idea. Nick Miller says, get two or three people with you and talk about stuff while you all paint or build models. Since you won't be able to focus while painting, maybe focus on building. Well, see, that was the trick. That was my the first time that I tried to do it. Um, I was trying to build Plague Monks, and it was... Well, first of all, it was also very difficult because of the setup here. Like, I was trying to build the Plague Monks on camera, but the camera was... And you can't see it, but it was over on this side. And so my keyboard's right here in front of me. And there's the camera. And so I had to go, like, way over here to try to build, and it was over to a weird angle, and it was it was tough. It was not, it was not well thought out. Um, at some point, we'll figure that out. Maybe you see how that goes, but... Um, Marcus Sunbaum says, how about the every Monday show? And that's, at, well, every other Monday we go to dinner with my mom. So that's not going to work out probably. Um, 
But yeah, a lot of people like the hot mess idea. I do too. I think it's a good idea. Um, what else? Patrick Wilson says, I've definitely noticed those gains. My painting terrain and converting has reached another level for me. Yeah, and that's the thing too, is the more that you do that stuff, you know, you be, you, it becomes a part of your life a little bit more and you start to do it more, you get better at it. Until you like, and I've talked about this in the past, until you hit a certain spot where you kind of don't get as, you don't get as many gains, but what happens is you start to get faster. That's what I've found. Like I'm not a much better painter than I was last year, but I'm a faster painter than I was last year, absolutely. So that's good. Um, something I would love to see on YouTube is a war game campaign report. Not the battle reports though, I find them boring, but all the stuff in between, diplomacy, territory uh, d updates. Oh, that'd be kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I, I do need to start doing more battle reports. I've got a second battle report for Wreckage, which I need to uh, edit and put up. Maybe I'll do that. Not for Friday's video, maybe the next video. For Yeah, well, when Matt and I got together and we filmed two battle reports, um, there was an audio problem, and so I have to go through this weird ritual to get the audio out of the recorder. I have to plug one recorder into another recorder and play from the recorder that we recorded on into the other recorder so that it records. And, and it's a thing. And so, um, but I need to, so maybe I'll do that this afternoon too to record that second audio so that I can edit that stuff together. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, um, and then I want to start doing some Kill Team Battle Reports too and maybe some other stuff, maybe a Shadespire. Um, but yeah, I do want to start doing a little bit more of those, but I want to do them differently. Like I think that the Wreckage one was different than a lot of other Battle Reports, so that was fun. Um, maybe something kind of campaign uh, related would be kind of cool. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, let me see. What's your take on GW crossing over into movies and TV series? Oh, we talked about that a little bit earlier. I would love to see. We were talking about how it'd be like on Netflix or like eh, maybe HBO, but I don't really have HBO, so I'd really like to see it on Netflix. Like a really cool Netflix, like maybe like a like an Inquisition style, like, you know, like something like if they just did like, if they did an Eisenhorn series, yeah, I you, unless they really stunk it up and did it poorly, I would be super happy. So, yeah. Um, any conventions outside the United States? That's also a good question. I would like to go to Europe, uh, predominantly the UK, I think. Um, I would have to get a passport and go through all that rigmarole because I've not left the country uh, yet. Uh, so, but I, it's something I've kicked around the idea of. I would like to go, you know, make a pilgrimage, as it were, and go to there and see how it works out. Um, Travis says, I'm looking at getting an airbrush. Watch some of your videos. Iowata has a kit that comes with a brush, compressor, and all that for $200. Is that a good starting point to airbrushing? I mean, it might be. I don't know. I mean, 200 bucks seems a little inexpensive. Um, maybe it's like a really good deal on Amazon or something like that. Like, I know, well, I mean, my compressor's, a little, well, my, actually, my compressor's not an Iowata. I don't know. My compressor's a Sparmax, uh, which was expensive, expensive-ish. It was like 350 but I got it for like 40% off. So um, I think my airbrush, my Iowata airbrush was like 200 bucks just by itself. Well, I mean, it came with a hose and some paints and stuff like that, but it was predominantly mostly by itself. Again, I got that 40% off too. That's one of the things that's sort of nice about Hobby Lobby. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I mean, you could give it a try. I mean, it's 200 bucks. It's not bad. Um, what I did was I bought a $200 or nearly $200 airbrush for 40% off. Uh, and then I bought just like a regular like $50 or $60 air compressor from the, the hardware store. It was noisy, but it did the job just fine. And then you could eventually decide if you wanted to upgrade to a better, more airbrush positive compressor, something that's got like a, you know, that's quieter and designed more for airbrush. So yeah. Um, what else? Someone says, try the new Lord of the Rings. I'll have to take a look at it. Uh, Eisenhorde would be awesome. That would be a spectacular series. Um, that's the problem, yeah. If the Games Workshop Warhammer 40K on HBO nudity would be mandatory, yeah. See that we don't want that. That's I don't I don't need to see any nude Space Marines. Thanks, I'm good. Um, Kevin Trudeau says thanks for painting, or for posting painting techniques. As someone who is just coming back in the hobby, learning wet palette and wet blending is really changing painting for me. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Like one of the things that I'm also looking at doing is I want to do a series very soon 
that is like I've done a bunch of series and I've talked a lot about how to get into painting and all that kind of stuff. But I want to make like a full blown like paint, you know, like a what do you call it, a playlist on YouTube that is a step by step. Okay, this is how you clip these things off of the sprue. This is how you scrape off mold lines. This is how you glue, and then a video about how you prime, and then a video, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So that if you've got a friend, let's say, who's just getting into the hobby, and they're like, yeah, but I don't know how to, you know, get into it. I don't know how to actually do these things. You can send them to this playlist and just say, watch them in order from one to 30 or whatever, and it will teach you everything you need to know. Um, I started to do that with, with um, Airbrush. I've got a five part series, I think. And I need to do a couple more in there, obviously, but I want to do that also just with plain, just straight up, like painting and and um, you know all that stuff, uh, building from 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 opening the box to putting it on the table. I would love to do a series like that, and I'm I'm looking at doing that soonish too. So yeah. Um, hmm. No doubt it would be done up stinky and written by hacks that don't understand the universe i've been disappointed too many times talking about a television show or a movie yeah that's 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 very possible i could see that too uh qwerty presser oh fun uh what do you think about gw branching out into kids books i think it makes total sense i mean D and is doing the same thing they've got a book coming out soon called the one two threes or, or the abcs of D and D. Or is it the one, two, threes of D and D? Something like that. Um, you know, I don't feel personally like it's a bad thing. Like some industries will try to target children. You know, like I don't know the cigarette industry. You know, used to do with um, Joe the Camel and stuff like that, and that was not necessarily a great idea. But this is really when we get down to brass tacks. These are toys. So having a toy industry that actually targets children and says, look, this is something you might be interested in, especially when you get a bit older, I don't have any problem with that. Um, and also because there are so many people of my age and younger who have children, not me, but other people, and they want to get their kids into it. If you've got like some sort of book you can give them that like teaches them stuff early on about it and gets them into the lore, gets them into the world, and they then get interested, and then when they get old enough to be able to use an X-Acto blade without sticking it in their eye or whatever, um, or their mouth, um, then you can start teaching them like how to build and how to paint and things like that. So I don't have any problem with it at all. I think it's a smart idea. Um, just from straight up business, it makes sense they have to do that to be able to keep the new GW specifically. And other companies have been doing this longer than GW was. Um, the, the, these companies understand that they have to be able to get new people into the hobby to keep their jobs. So they need to keep doing that. It totally makes sense. Um... Adam, maybe go to Australia for a convention. Seems to be a hotbed for tabletop gaming. I like the concept of going to Australia. I do. I don't like the concept. If I if they could like knock me out and then I would just wake up and I was there, but being like in the middle seat in an airplane like this for 20 some hours, 24, 28, 26 weeks, whatever it would take for me to get there, I'm a little concerned about that. Um because I'm a big guy. I don't know. I, I would like to. It would be cool. I've never been there. It would be very interesting. Um, I have um, some reservations. Why does I have a little check mark next to my name down here? That's weird. I'm going to just type down here and see what it says. Hello? I don't know why it has a little check mark next to my name down there. That's weird. Maybe it finally kicked in, but it hasn't kicked in in the normal videos yet. I don't know. <laughs> but there it is. So, yeah. I, I would like to do a little bit more travel that way. I think it would be kind of cool, too. Um, let's see here. Boop, boop, ba -doo. What else have we got here? Uh, Devin Jones says, watch Hobby Cheating 1 through 150. Yeah, I mean, Vince does amazing stuff. I would like to do it a little bit more. Vince's stuff is great because it teaches you all kinds of different things. I would almost like to do it a little bit more, like step one to step whatever. And it would, it would be my own thing. I have no problem with other people doing, you know, obviously everybody gets to, to do the content they want to do. But I would like to also have that and offer it to people and say, look, here's step one and and, and, and put it in order. Um, but yeah, um, uh, your stuff, or, uh, Vince's stuff is awesome. I'm going to be on Vince's show. I'm going to be on Warhammer Weekly on the 12th, question mark, of September. Um... Boop, boop, ba -doo. Let me see here. I'm pretty sure it's the 12th of September. Yep, I'm going to be on Vince's show 
talking about Kill Team, which is really interesting because his show is about Age of Sigmar. But um, he wanted to have me on. Uh, he he wanted to have me on to talk about um, you know like if you've been an Age of Sigmar player for a long time but you've always been kind of interested in 40k here's ways that you could get into it and that kind of stuff so we're gonna have a good talk about that I, I enjoy uh, his stuff. Um, kids learn how to cook from age two, so teaching them how to use a hobby knife is the least of my concern. I don't know, man. I don't want to give a two year old a knife. I don't. Know. <laughs> it's just that's me. I don't know. Uh, you know that's fine. Um, got a bunch of people saying that if you want to fly long distances, you take Benadryl. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, I've never been able to sleep on a plane either. That's, that's a good point. Um, Brian Griffiths is talking about uh, being savaged by drop bears in Australia. That is a concern, definitely. Um, let's see here. International flights tend to have larger seats than domestic. That's probably also true. I've probably only flown domestic, so I, I guess there's that. Um Hearing a lot about a 14-hour plane ride from Wisconsin to Australia? Maybe, I guess. I don't know. Um, Matthew Sears mentioned that uh, I just gave everybody permission to kidnap me and take him to Australia. Well, I mean, not really. Um, JP Got Rocket says, we used to get check marks by our names in grade school, and that was not a good thing. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's a good thing now. Um, let me see here. Brian Oxy says, I'm planning a Warhammer World trip next year, but that's just a train journey for me. Yeah, I would like to go to, to Nottingham and, and check that out. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Nef Nefaniel says, who's Vince? Uh, Vince Venturella. If you look up his channel on YouTube, Vince Venturella. It's Venturella? How you would spell it, or is it Ventruella? Anyway, if you look him up on YouTube, he's got a great channel teaching people about how to paint and, and things like that. And uh, he's a very good painter himself. He just won the uh, the best in show at uh, the Gen Con Miniatures um, contest or whatever for painting. I forget what they call it. There's a specific name they call it, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. But yeah, he won uh, best in show uh, this past. When was it the early August? So yeah, earlier this month. Um, so yeah, it was an amazing looking model. It was one of the, I think, Sisters of Cain, like the big snake lady with the wings and all that stuff. And it was just super, really, really, really good. Uh, so yeah, and he got, so he got best of show for that. So yeah, really super good. Um, hmm. According to YJ, uh, lived in Wisconsin a few years back, getting home from Australia took like 40 hours. That is a long time. That's a good point. Um, Airwatch says hi all from hot and humid Israel. Hello, we're actually uh, just about done. We got a couple more minutes. Um, so yeah. So anyway, if you're going to be anywhere near the Northern Virginia area this upcoming weekend, you should totally try to go to the Nova Open. Uh, if you're already going to the Nova Open, I hope I will see you there. If if you see me at the Nova Open, hop up and say hi. Um, I'll be giving my two classes about YouTube. One's more technical and about cameras and junk like that. And the other one's more about uh, content and uh, uh, marketing and, and, and stuff like that. Um, Sam will be there, so definitely stop by and say hi to Sam. Um, I hear that there's going to be some parties, you know. Hopefully no bad people come. Um, it's a... It's an old school Beastie Boys reference. Anyway, um, anyway, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, to, to Nova Open. So if you get a chance, if you live near there, think about trying to go. If you're already going, say hi when you come. And um, and that's pretty much it. Again, thanks to everybody for coming and watching today. Thanks to everyone for um, 100,000 subscribers. That's that's that was that was a milestone. But like I said in the video, it's just the beginning. And so I've got plans, and I'm looking forward to where it's going to go next. Joe White says, see you at Nova going to the JARS beginners classes today. Well, that's cool. So yeah, it's I, there's just a lot going on, and I'm glad to, you guys are along on the trip, and I want to keep uh, everything going the way that it's going. Moderator Matt wants me to give Sam butterfly kisses for him. Uh, consider it done. i got to look up what butterfly kisses again are. I have to, I don't, I hope they're not bad. Um, but that's what, anyway, that's, that's, the, that's the show. So uh, we'll see you in two weeks and I'll tell you how Nova Open went and everything like that. We're going to stay on schedule because all my travels happen to be between the every other Sunday show for the, at least the foreseeable future. 
I'll have to look and see if when I go to LVO, if that's going to be a problem. That's in February, so we got time. Anyway, um, so thanks for watching, and uh, I appreciate the attention. I appreciate all of you and um, and the the, the 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 nice things that people have said in the the chats and and everything. And so. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So uh, have a good day and uh, keep hobbying and thanks for watching.